All right, today we have a special quiz sent in by a viewer named John. He's been watching the channel for a couple of years. He's been wanting to make this quiz. He did it. It's perfect. I love it. Very unique trivia idea. Okay, so 21 questions, and technically it is a random knowledge trivia quiz, but all of the answers are featured in the Billy Joel song, We Didn't Start the Fire. If you did your homework after last night, you've listened to it, you're ready to go today. So let's get started with We Didn't Start the Fire trivia. Question number one, released by Disney in 1953. What full-length animated feature film follows the adventures of John, Michael, and Wendy in Neverland? We're getting started with a little easy one. No big deal. They will get harder. The answer is Peter Pan. Question number two, playing baseball for New York from 1951 through 1968 and racking up 536 home runs, what Yankee great took over as the starting center fielder in 1952, replacing another Yankee legend, Joe DiMaggio? The answer is Mickey Mantle. Question number three, what movie tells the story of Anna Leonowens, a widow who accepts a live-in governess job in a far-off land and stars Deborah Kerr and Yul Brynner, who won the 1957 Best Actor Oscar for his role? That far off land was, I believe, the land of Siam, and it was called The King and I. The King and I is the answer. Question number four. Born in Spring Gully, South Carolina, with the name Ernest Evans, what American rock and roll star song, The Twist, peaked at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 in September of 1960? The answer is Chubby Checker. Question number five. What is the country that won its independence from British control on August 19th, 1919, and then was invaded much later in 1979 by the Soviet Union to support a tottering communist regime whose capital is named Kabul? Remember, there's only 120 different social and historical and geographical references. Just pick one. The answer to this one is Afghanistan. Question number six. Commissioned by the Moscow Children's Theater in the 1930s, the orchestral version of Peter and the Wolf tells the story of Peter who disobeys his grandfather and climbs over the garden wall and encounters a wolf. Who was commissioned to create this work? Peter and the Wolf by Sergei Prokofiev. Question number seven. This was a collection of Italian-American organized crime families that operated in the United States since the 1920s and was known as La Cosa Nostra. What is its more common name? They call it La Cosa Nostra. We mostly call it the Mafia. Question number eight. What TV game show that premiered as a daytime game show on NBC in 1975 hosted by Chuck Woolery had a syndicated nighttime version that started in 1983 and was hosted by Pat Sajak until his retirement in 2023?
The answer is Wheel of Fortune. Question number nine. First marketed by the Whammo Company in 1958, what toy became a huge fad across America, reportedly having sold an estimated 25 million within the first four months of production? That toy by the Whammo Company was the Hula Hoop. You know, for kids. Question number 10, Fort Gordon, the last of nine army posts in the United States named for men who fought for the Confederacy, officially changed its name in a renaming ceremony on October 27th, 2023. Who is the installation named for now? Now it is named for Dwight D. Eisenhower. Question number 11. He started playing baseball in the 1930s at age 15 in the Negro National League for the Elite Giants. After Jackie Robinson broke the color barrier, who was this player that was able to sign with the Brooklyn Dodgers and played catcher from 1948 until a crippling car accident ended his career in 1957? The answer is Roy Campanella. Question number 12. Before becoming the 42nd President of the United States, Bill Clinton made what city his home during his 16-year tenure as the Governor of Arkansas that is also the state's capital? The answer is Little Rock. Question number 13. What is the name of the Marine Corps aviator, astronaut, and politician who was the third American in space and the first to orbit the Earth in his Friendship 7 capsule? The answer is John Glenn. Question number 14. What 1992 movie starring Denzel Washington is a biopic about a black nationalist leader covering his early life and career as a small time gangster to his ministry as a member of the Nation of Islam? The answer is Malcolm X. Question number 15. The Ranger, Pacer, Villager, and Corsair are among 18 different models produced by this vehicle brand. What vehicle brand that debuted in 1957 was shut down with the 1960 year model being the last available for sale? The answer is the Edsel. Edsel is the answer we're looking for. Question number 16. What is the name of the actress who starred in three Alfred Hitchcock movies? Dial M for Murder, Rear Window, and To Catch a Thief, who retired from acting at the age of 26 to marry Prince Rainier III of Monaco. Her name is Grace Kelly, or Princess Grace. Question number 17. What is the term given to a preparation created from inactive or weakened form of a causative agent that is administered, often by injection, and used to stimulate an immune response? 
The hint makes it too easy, but you may have gotten one for the flu or COVID-19. That one was basically a gimme. We've heard that word so much over the last few years. The answer is vaccine. Question number 18. In the 2013 biographical movie Behind the Candelabra, Matt Damon played Scott Thorson, the lover of Michael Douglas's character. Who did Michael Douglas play in this movie? Behind the Candelabra is the biographical movie of Liberace. Question number 19. What name is given to the largest and busiest international airport in France? It's a short question, but what else can you add that's not just pure fluff? With hundreds of flights daily, what name is given to the largest and busiest international airport in France that is mentioned in the song We Didn't Start the Fire by Billy Joel? The answer is Charles de Gaulle. Now question 20. The answers to the last 19 questions all appear in Billy Joel's song We Didn't Start the Fire. The questions are not necessarily the references that Billy Joel was alluding to, but the answers are all in the song. That said, can you tell me the band that released an updated version of We Didn't Start the Fire covering the events from 1989 to 2023? I have not heard this version, but I will look it up today. Maybe we'll do a quiz on the Fallout Boy version of the song. Fallout Boy is the answer that we're looking for. That is the end of the quiz. Well, we got the tiebreaker coming up, but. I just want to take another minute to say thank you to John for sending in this excellent quiz. I love a good creative quiz, and we've had a couple of them this week, this being one of them. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who watched it. Hopefully you enjoyed this type of quiz. When I get around to redoing some of these quizzes and, and tighten it up, making a better production out of it, I can't wait to do this one and add some pictures of all these specific references. I think that's it for right now. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Here's question 21, the tiebreaker for today. If you dissect Billy Joel's song, We Didn't Start the Fire, how many historical references are made throughout the song? I forgot that was the tiebreaker question and I may have already said that at one point during this quiz. Whichever player got closest to 119 wins the point. There was like 117. Two of them were kind of the same, but they referenced different stuff. So 119 is the answer we're going with. Whichever player got closest to 119 is going to win the point. If you can see the screen right now, you can see all of these individual references that he had to go with. So there's enough in here for, man... 119, five more, well, four more quizzes, almost five more quizzes. Very impressive work, John. Thank you for a great quiz. Thank you, everybody who stuck around and watched the whole thing. By the way, just to give you an idea of how thorough John is, not only did he send me this list of all of the references that's on the screen right now, but if you go to the description of the video, he actually sent in uh, links to all of the sources for his questions and answers to show that he had looked them up and these were the right answers. Very thorough. If I did that with every quiz that I did, I could do about five quizzes a year. This was a very thorough quiz. Thank you. See you tomorrow.